and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we are gonna make a really good smelling soap using this fragrance, bergamot and honey. Oh man, this smells delightful. Uh, this is from Nurture Soap, and I've soaped with this before. It soaps really well. It smells fantastic. Uh, and one of the things that I love about Nurture Soap is that they write on here some bullet notes for me, which is very helpful. Uh, it says, it says, Okay, I don't have my reading glasses on, but I'll try and read here. It says no acceleration or discoloration, 0% vanillin, and it says use up to 6% in soap. That's so handy to have it on there. I love that. So we're going to use this today, and because of the honey notes in here, I'm going to be using some raw honey in the soap today, and I'll talk about how to... Um, Use honey and not have your soap overheat because honey gets soap very hot in the mold. So you want to be cautious, but it makes a wonderful additive to soap. And so for the colors with the bergamot and the honey, I'm going to be using for the honey, well, to represent the scent notes, I'm going to use goldenrod mica from Be Scented along with, let's see, along with lime green mojita from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Those are going to be the color swirls. Isn't that pretty? And it just smells so good. So another additive that I'm going to use in the soap today, because it just sounded like it went along with the honey to me, is I'll be using buttermilk powder. And I'll do the milk in oil with the powder. So when I add my dry additives, my kale and clay and my colloidal oats like I normally do, I will add buttermilk powder also. And it makes a fabulous lather, a very creamy lather. I just love milk soaps. And we'll talk about using a powder versus a liquid when we get to that point. So. That's about it. We talked about the fragrance. We talked about the colors. Let me get everything cleaned up and prepped and ready to go. And let's come back and make some bergamot and honey soap. Okay, we are back with all of my oils and butters here and it's additives time. So here are my, uh, what do I have? My kale and clay, my colloidal oats, and here is my buttermilk powder. I got this on Amazon. And uh, here is my honey. And I am I warmed this up just a little bit so it's very fluid and it'll mix in. You don't have to warm it, but mine was really thick. Here it is, it's just gently warmed. And uh, I am using honey at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. That's how I figure out how much honey I want. Dry additives, you can go one teaspoon up to one tablespoon per pound of oils. Um, but that's my honey. It's gonna go right on in here into the oils. I think it smells so good and it really, um, I did not put any sugar in my lye solution because this honey is gonna do it. It's gonna make a fabulous lather. And now I have to get my dry ingredients in here. So let's go ahead and do, this is a two tablespoon scoop of kale and clay and a two tablespoon scoop of colloidal oats. And I have been asked, can you make your own colloidal oats? Um, I don't think you can at home, unless you have like a really heavy duty, like stone grinder. Um, I had a wheat, I used to mill my own flour and bake my own bread and super, you know, from scratch girl here. And I cannot get a fine enough grind in my highest power coffee grinder and in my wheat grinder on the finest grind. Um, colloidal oats is such a fine grind that it dissolves out. Now, if you do take a whole oat and grind it really fine, it's gonna be beautiful in soap, but it will have a little bit of a feel. You'll be able to feel it in there. A true colloidal oat is gonna be so smooth, you won't feel it in the bar. It won't have any exfoliating texture to it. So that's a choice you can make. Again, a nice ground oat feels wonderful in soap and it's fantastic. All the properties are still in there. It just depends on if you want a smooth bar or a little bit of texture in your bar. Let me get the buttermilk in here before I forget. And I'm gonna do, this is a two tablespoon scoop on the buttermilk and I heaped it up there. Let's get this all blended up and then we will come back and get to making our soap. are back and here is my lye water and I did not put sugar in here again. I do have tussa silk fibers and some sodium lactate. That's what's going on. 
in this little pot. Um, and I do have the fragrance already in here. I have my colors are pre-dispersed in a little bit of distilled water ready to go. And I think today I'm gonna do a drop swirl. I was thinking about running my hanger through and uh, I think I'm just gonna do a drop swirl and let's see what kind of a design we can get just by pouring the different colors into the mold. So one of the things, so the honey is already in here. I'm soaping very cool. These are, my studio right now is about 65 degrees. These oils are about 70, these are about 75 to 80 degrees. These, this lye solution. Um, so I'm soaping cool. And then after, you know, of course, after this mixes together with the, the milk solids in there with the buttermilk and the honey, it's gonna heat up. So what I'm gonna do is I will leave my mold uncovered and I will just come down and keep an eye on it. Every couple of hours, I'll take a peek. If I notice it starting to crack at all on the top or any swelling, it starts, when a soap overheats, it kind of swells up in the middle. If I see any indication of that, I'm gonna pop this right in the refrigerator. I don't think I will, my studio is pretty cool, but it's just good to keep an eye on it when you're dealing with uh, especially honey in a soap. So, all that being said, Let's get to it. I'm gonna add the lye water in here to the oils. I'm gonna get it up to a nice emulsion and we'll split off for our colors and hopefully get a really beautiful drop swirl today. the next day and I did end up putting my lid on this mold gosh oh gosh really late after it had been sitting for several hours like six hours I didn't have any overheating issues it did get really warm so I had the lid off for a while and it just sat um, and then when I felt like it was past its ultimate heating mass I went ahead and threw the lid on here just because I work down in my studio a lot and I don't want anything you know getting bumped into here you know accidents happen i drop things or whatever so the lid was on just for protection here it is we didn't have any cracking any major overheating and isn't that pretty it's just gentle it smells fantastic i really think the colors represent this fragrance really well um, i did come down earlier and steam the top that's the glossiness on there it did not have soda ash but it was a little dull and because it's so simple i just wanted to give it a little bling so it's glossed up it's perfectly dry to the touch let's get in here and see how that drop swirl came out
All right, we are back with the lovely Olga and a very interesting phenomenon. So this right here, you're seeing those dots, that is honey or scorched honey or it heated honey. <laughs> um, and I think these colors are going to lighten up more to the top colors, but look at the bottom. That is scorched honey. Now this was very fluid when I poured it. Um, so I have a feeling that some of the honey sank to the bottom and this did get very hot in the mold and look what happened. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna cut these bars and chat as we cut and talk about all things soap. And I'm gonna let these sit for several days to see if the color perks up at all. And then when we come back to Bevel and Stamp, we'll talk about it some more then. And I'll do a lather test for you because this has me very curious. I have never had that happen with honey before. If you have soaked with honey and had it scorch on the bottom like that, I would love to hear, um, I'd love to hear your experience with that. I think this soap is still going to be fine and I'm curious to see if it bounces back in the colors, um, but only time will tell. For now, let's get in here and you can just barely see the different colors, the yellow. Um, so I'm hoping, see how the top is a little bit brighter? I'm hoping that as this is, uh, you know, exposed to air and oxidizes, that it's gonna lighten up like the side there. Only time will tell. I'll tell you what though, it sure does smell good. So my cautionary tale on this soap would be that I poured a little too early I should have gotten a thicker trace, and I have no idea if that would have happened or not. That is very curious to me. Hmm. You know, we will definitely be coming back in a couple days. Um, and normally I just fast forward through the beveling and all of that, but uh, I will talk through it. And as we discover if anything changes over the next few days and we're going to do a lather test i want to see how that feels it doesn't feel you know sticky or sugary or anything but you know that's not very pleasing to the eye goodness only time will tell mysteries of soap making yeah there we go that is a little spot of honey that got caramelized now it doesn't feel you know it's just a discoloration there but um yeah, that honey did not want to blend in, I guess. And I have worked with honey before, and I've never had this happen. Very curious. All right, let's get into the next loaf here, the center loaf. I do like the top. Um, yeah, this is interesting. You know, it's one of the joys and adventures of soap making. Every once in a while, you get a very interesting loaf and I would definitely say this is one of them huh interesting so would I call this soap a fail that's the question well the verdict is still out right now though I'm leaning towards this batch being a fail and uh, although it's probably great soap this will probably be for friends and family um, but we'll see in a few days, but that is what I'm edging at right now. Very rarely have I had a fail and this one might be it. Hmm, we'll see. I think it's, uh, it keeps you humble, right? <laughs> it's because I make goat milk, oats, and honey with raw honey. Like every couple of months I'm restocking that and I've used, this is the same jar of honey that I used just used to make a, my goat milk oats and honey and I did not have this issue so curiouser and curiouser and you know unless these colors brighten up they're just not that pretty the top is pretty they smell great but that's not very good looking right there all right let's get into the last loaf this is the outside that's the colors facing the out, and there's the inside. So I'm hoping the inside brightens up. But all that being said, how about you all? Have you had a soapy fail or a soap do something completely unexpected? I'd love to hear about it if you've had this experience. So again, there's the outside and there's the inside. Oh, those soap tops are cute though. Darn it all. <laughs> Oh, keeps you humble, keeps you humble. Anyway, 
I'm just gonna get this uh, set over here on my little rack and we will be back in a few days to uh, see what, if anything has happened with these and give it a lather test and I will make the um, call if this is a total fail or not. We shall see. All right, we are back. It has been several days and they lightened up a little. So there's the outside. They've lightened up a little, but the honey is still on the bottom. There's spots all over the bars. These just did not turn out very appealing looking. So these are gonna be friends and family bars. I'll use this soap. It smells fantastic. And it's really strange to me. I have uh, used this fragrance before, so I'm not gonna blame the fragrance. Uh, I think this was somehow I, I messed it up. Um, I did some research on honey in soaps and a lot of people like to uh, dissolve honey in hot lye water when they do that so that it's completely dissolved and that is how they add honey. Some people add it after trace. So a couple people, you know, I, I was researching different problems with adding honey to soaps and um, it's not uncommon to have honey spots and separation. It does happen to people. I've never had it happen to me before. Uh, it's not a lot of fun because you know, that's just not appealing looking. But, oh, and you can see like the honey dots on there where it just separated. So um, blend really well. And so what I plan on doing next time I do a honey soap is I am going to try dissolving it in warm water and then cooling the water and, and making my lye solution with honey water instead of sugar water. And we'll give it a try that way. I'm not giving up on honey. It's a great soap additive and I've never had this happen before, but there it is. They're not very pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and bevel and stamp these and I will do a lather test after that. But here is my, I put all my shavings in this big bucket because after I get done beveling these and a couple other batches, I'm gonna be making a rebatch video because I got a lot of shavings here. So let's, let's get these beveled and stamped and then uh, we'll get to the lather test. to do our lather test. Here's a little end slice. I mean, they're not bad looking. Um, and if I don't feel any tacky honey feel in the lather and stuff, I am definitely gonna share these with friends and family. But another thing you could do with these is you saw my soap scrap bucket. You could just uh, shave these up into shreds and rebatch. Um, but anyway, I decided they are pretty enough to where I'm going to give these to friends and family, but they are not sellable in my, in my mind. So let's do a lather test and I have my pH strips out here. We're going to test the pH uh, because this did act up a little weird. I want to make sure it's good and skin safe. So I just have some warm water here and we're going to work this into a lather and I will tell you how it feels. I wish you could feel this with me. Oh boy. It's smooth, this feels divine. Very, oh, that's a nice creamy lather. That buttermilk powder is delightful. Okay, here's very thick, so I'm gonna add a little water to get the lather going. Oh, beautiful, abundant lather. This is a fantastic soap, and with that honey, it's gonna be so gentle. It doesn't have any tacky or you know sugar feel to it. Oh, this is great. I'm super happy. All right, let's do a pH test on here. See how it rinses. Oh, it feels soft. It rinses wonderfully. So again, making soap, it has been several days. And so this is, this soap is saponified. In other words, all of the lye and the oils have worked their magic and turned into soap so it won't be lye heavy or caustic or anything. It's completely safe. And let's do our pH test here. So I'm gonna work up a little fresh lather. 
put our pH strip on here and pull it off. All right, and so here's the pH strip, and I know the coloring and the lighting isn't perfect for this, but you want soap to be between an eight and a 10, preferably a nine is perfect, and I am gonna call it that we are right in here between an eight and a nine. So the pH on this soap is perfect, very skin safe. It still has all those divine ingredients. It smells like a dream, but it's just not beautiful looking. So there it is. Anyway, back to, um, so obviously this soap is a good pH, very skin safe, but it hasn't finished curing. And curing is when the excess water has fully evaporated out and it makes your bar longer lasting, it's harder. Um, some people will say it's gentler, I don't know. I think at this point, several days out from making, it's, it's very gentle. I mean, you saw the pH strip, that is exactly what a soap should be. So um, the cure time is the excess water evaporating and making a good, hard, long lasting bar. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give these a full cure time before I wrap them up for my family and ship them out. I think my kids will love this. Oh, I can't stop lathering. This feels so nice. This is a really good lather. Boy, I wish these had come out a little more aesthetically pretty because this is beautiful. Look at that beautiful thick lather. It feels wonderful. Anyway, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. This was an interesting video. You know, I have to be honest with you all. The temptation to just delete the video when I cut it and saw that honey on the bottom, I'm like, you know, I could just ditch this whole thing and never even show this video. But I thought I'd bring you along. You win some, you lose some. Keeps you humble. Uh, soap behaving badly. I'm gonna call this a fail, even though I have a whole batch of beautiful soap that I can bless my friends and family with. Uh, as far as selling soap, this is a fail. But there it is. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And uh, if you have any comments to make about using honey, and if you've had a problem with honey, again, I would love to hear how you handled it. So I hope that you have a wonderful day.